Hello, my name is Jim Carrington from Oregon State University, and I'm honored that our paper has been selected for being featured in this video. Our 2003 developmental cell paper was one of the early papers looking at how microRNAs functioned in plants. The small RNA field was still in its early stages, but it was a very exciting time as there were many major mechanistic breakthroughs that were being reported every week. We also had a long-standing interest in RNA viruses, and in particular how viruses interfered with the natural antiviral silencing response. RNA-based silencing in plants confers cell autonomous and cell non-autonomous immunity. In fact, it functions as an adaptive antiviral response in plants, and we and others had shown in 1998 that plant viruses encode proteins that suppress the silencing response. Now, what else did we know when we did this work in 2002? First, dozens of microRNAs had just been found in human, flies, and C. elegans, and we and others, most notably David Bartel's group, had just identified the first set of microRNAs in plants using Arabidopsis. We had just learned about the first round of predicted plant microRNA targets, again, mainly from David's group, and a high percentage of these were predicted to code for transcription factors that were relevant to growth and development. Meristem identity, organ identity, polarity, auxin signaling, and so on. And we've just shown that in contrast to animal microRNAs, plant microRNAs had slicer activity on their targets. And we could detect this by identification of microRNA-guided cleavage products. Although we now know that plant microRNA targets are repressed through both slicer and non-slicer mechanisms, the cleavage products provided convenient markers for us to rapidly and accurately validate predicted microRNA targets back in the early days. In the developmental cell paper, we started by describing phenotypes of Arabidopsis plants infected by a virus, turnip mosaic virus, and transgenic plants um, expressing the precursor to the silencing suppressor protein HC Pro. So we tested both infected plants and plants that express just the suppressor. In both cases, the plants exhibited severe pleiotropic phenotypes. And interestingly, many of the phenotypes resembled those of mutant plants that had defects in dicer like one, which we had learned in 2002 is required for microRNA precursor processing. This led us to ask the question, was the virus interfering with Arabidopsis microRNAs or microRNA function? And if so, was the suppressor interfering with microRNA production or a downstream effector function? We were interested not only because this might explain some aspects of viral disease, but also because we thought the suppressors might serve as useful inhibitors that would help illuminate silencing processes. We showed that microRNAs accumulated just fine in the presence of the suppressor, regardless of how we delivered the suppressor into plants, either with a virus or on a transgene or in transient assays. However, there were very clear effects on target messenger RNAs in virus-infected and suppressor-expressing plants. Specifically, when we examined 10 different messenger RNAs, which were collectively targeted by five different microRNAs, we showed that the transcript levels increased in the presence of the suppressor. And in transient assays, we could show that the increase was coincident with inhibition of slicer activity. So what we proposed was that viruses, through their silencing suppressor proteins, were coincidentally interfering with both the antiviral silencing response and the microRNA pathway. And that this might be reflective of either an intersection of these pathways or interference with a common component to those pathways. We were also excited in the paper to speculate about the idea that virus-induced symptoms could be explained partly as developmental defects triggered by inhibition of microRNA-mediated regulation of key factors that act in and around meristems. Subsequent to this paper, there have been thousands of papers on microRNAs, virus-encoded suppressors, and mechanistic and genomic features of silencing pathways in plants, as well as animals. 
the antiviral silencing response is much more complicated than we originally thought with the participation of multiple dicer proteins that make functionally distinct types of short interfering RNAs. There's the involvement of at least two RNA-dependent RNA polymerases that are necessary for full amplification and involvement of possibly several argonauts, which are the effector proteins that are guided by small RNAs. We and others also found that HC-PRO and several other suppressors function to block incorporation of microRNAs as well as short interfering RNAs that guide antiviral silencing into argonaut-containing complexes. This is because the HC-PRO protein directly binds small RNA duplexes, which form as the direct product of dicer reactions. And since microRNA and siRNA duplexes look similar, they're both captured by HC-PRO. But other suppressors have been found to inhibit argonaut functions, or trigger argonaut degradation, or inhibit silencing amplification mechanisms. There's actually a variety of ways that suppressors can uh, impede antiviral silencing. And indeed, HC-PRO may also be functioning to silence or to affect um, other components of the antiviral silencing uh, pathway in addition to binding small RNA duplexes. This is still a very active field, and I think there are still many surprises ahead in the future. Thanks for watching.